hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 10 of our F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend to the Styrian Mountains and the Austrian Grand Prix. We've officially caught up and overtaken the real life Formula 1 season. And uh, yeah, this weekend though, our second sprint race of the all new campaign. If you missed out on the video uh, that went live yesterday from Circuit Gio Villeneuve, would highly recommend going back and checking out. And of course as well, Round 2 of the Williams Road to Glory went live a little bit earlier on today. And, hopefully, unless I've messed up when this video has gone live, we should also currently be live uh, over on my Twitch as well with Round 1 of Gary and I's co-op career mode as well. So it's all kicking off at the moment as we head into F123. You know, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I really do hope you guys are enjoying the content as well. Of course, if you're new around here, please make sure you drop a sub and click that bell notification icon as well. Of course, we're doing daily F1 My Team videos until we win the World Championship. So yeah, massive thank you to all of you uh, for the support so far. And of course, before we head into the Austrian GP this weekend, many, many upgrades uh, in the works behind the scenes. But we need to try and do uh, an extra one as well. I don't know if we've got enough RMD. I don't think... Yeah, I've said that and I don't think we can do anything at the moment. Still waiting on some of the other upgrades to come in then. So hopefully, there we go, new front wing uh, has gone onto the car. So hopefully that is going to allow us uh, to do yet another upgrade then. And that'll come on uh, before the Hungarian GP in a few weeks' time there. Trying to spend, of course, all the R&D uh, that we've got at the moment. Obviously trying to bring as many upgrades as we possibly can to the car there. And you can see, yeah, bringing in a load more cash as well. But yeah, another upgrade then in the works. Uh, we're still last, though, overall in the performance. We are we are lagging behind ever so slightly early on in this campaign, so we've really got to try and keep working uh, to get as many upgrades on the car as we possibly can. But yeah, let's do this thing, though. Austrian GP, Sprint Race Weekend. Timestamps down below if you just want to skip to the main action. Let's get on with it. F123 really does seem dead set at the moment on trying to screw me over with these free practice programs. Another weekend, okay, another qualifying up, simulation run there. As apparently, yeah, Austria, of course, we have seen some major changes uh, to this venue as well. Most notably, uh, you can now see the MotoGP chicane. Maybe, maybe we'll take that as a joke a lap at some point over the weekend as well. But... Yeah, I mean, just getting so many qualifying sim runs, which, of course, are impossible. So we've, we've kind of just got to earn all the R&D we possibly can from the other programs and then kind of pray. Right in the final corner, though, track climatization lap. Luckily, Austria, a pretty simple circuit there to 325 points, a purple score. Into our race simulation run, then. Austria shouldn't be too much of a challenge in that regard. Of course, generally speaking, uh, the, the game simulates top end speed quite badly still it seems like early on I mean later on in the game maybe it'll be absolutely ridiculous the other way uh, but yeah we're just kind of obviously able to get through a lot of these programs nice and early on it is yeah just the qualifying sim runs that are wildly inaccurate the other way around which is always always fun inside F123 but of course yeah as of today uh, we have also started my F123 setup guides video over on my second channel so it's going to be almost daily uploads over there of course over the next month or so and i'm going to be constantly trying to improve those as well there'll be a link down in the description below uh, to my sim racing channel so you know they're, they're not going to be for top esports drivers or that kind of thing but they are hopefully going to be setups uh, that can help you sort of learn what you need to be doing on f123 what you want to be looking for as well of course which is very very important and you know hopefully a handy guide because i think like a question i get most still is how do i race with no racing line and it is a difficult thing to learn but one of those things that once you've kind of learned the basics inside one racing game you can pretty much carry it over to any other one you like that being said though i have always been an advocate as well when people ask me about assists is run whatever assists you find fun on the F1 games, you know, unless you're trying to compete in esports or league racing. Just do what you enjoy on F123, but out of the final corner though, up towards the line, that's going to be another purple score, and I guess it's time for qualifying. Name 
a more iconic duo than F1 Austria and Heavy Rain there as we round our way through the final corner. This is going to be one of those sessions, I feel, where you've just got to try and put the laps in and see what sort of times you can get there. ERS management shouldn't be too big of an issue. It was nice trail braking uh, in towards Selmon. That was, was snagging the brakes on quite a lot of occasions, but we got it slowed down. We're just going to have to try and get times on the board and see how competitive we are. There is Magnussen sets the benchmark as that is late on the brakes at the top of the hill but again somehow I get it stopped first lap then 17-4 doesn't put us too far away actually leaves us fairly competitive uh, but I'm pretty certain I locked up at just about every single corner much lighter over the next 10 to 15 minutes okay so Mark then suggesting that potentially it's going to be another qualifying where being out last is going to be the key. Can we do what we did in Imola and go P1? Okay, and well, with a minute and a half to go then on the clock, we we are taking a bit of a gamble here. Track conditions are improving, but I've gone out on a set of intermediates. Looks like most of the cars have stayed out on the full wet tyres, and this is going to be the only run I get then, so just misjudged how much time we needed on pit exit. So this lap is going to have to be a real improvement. I'm sure we are going to see times drop by other cars as well then as everyone else rounding out the final corner to start their last lap half tenth up already as we head up the hill I mean we've been looking quite promising sat up in 10th place there it's again a little bit of front locking at the top of the hill but again able to find the delta on the exit we're really just comparing ourselves up to Zhou Guan Yu at the moment but well first half of the lap four tenths up already Austria such a short circuit this might actually have been what a good little gamble. I don't often get them right on the F1 games, but when I do, I will absolutely make a song and dance about it. Six and a half tenths up, seven tenths up as we make our way down the hill. So this might actually have been a very, very wise strategy call for us. Will we be able to go fastest then? Can the end of Q1 for the second time this season in changeable conditions? Yuki Sonoda sets the pace, so it absolutely is game on for everyone at the moment. Then if an Alpha Tauri can go quickest, Fittipaldi immediately slots up into P13 there. Lewis Hamilton now sets the benchmark, but through the final corner, up towards the line. How much are we going to be able to improve by up over the line? It's a 15-9 there, and that should just be easy into Q2. There we go then. Carlos Sainz fastest in his Ferrari. They're both Ferraris fastest at the end of Q1, but we make it into Q2 then uh, once again. I think that's the third time this season we've done that. Fittipaldi out in Q1, but the big shock in all of that, George Russell not able to improve there, and he will start the sprint race from the rear of the field. So he's got his work cut out for the rest of the weekend. Will we now be able to make it into Q3? And again then, coming to the end of Q2, track continuing to dry out, and it looks like once more we've reached a crossover period between this time, the intermediates, and the full dries then. So it is once again probably going to be a case of trying to be last car onto a run. So we're going to see what this first time is, but then we might actually back out of it to try and make sure we're one of the last cars to start the second flyer. Well, purple in sector one, purple in sector two. We may as well finish off this first run then. I don't know whether everyone has come out on a set of drives or whether there's still a couple of cars kicking around on the intermediates. You can see Gasly on the timing there on a set of intermediates, but through the final corner, surely this is going to go fastest and straight to the top of the timing sheets. A 109.9, and there we go. It's not something we see too often early on on F123, but we go purple, but we're going to have to go again there as Hamilton immediately finds another second and a half. And now we are in the drop zone, but we are again improving at quite a rapid rate of knots. Ty is definitely not such a fan of trying to do two laps in a row, but we're still two tenths up on Yuki Sonoda. We're not guaranteed to be making it into Q3 here still, despite the fact we one of the last cars to start a run. You can see everyone else. The pace is just moving around so, so much here. Thanks for stating the obvious mark out of the final corner, though. Are we going to make it into Q3? I think we're 11th. I think we've just missed out. It's 10th. We've done it. I, I was adamant that I said 11th, but we'll take it. Here we go, then. Charles Leclerc fastest again ahead of Carlos Sainz there. So both Ferraris ahead of both Red Bulls. Uh, Hamilton makes it into Q3 as well in his Mercedes. Esteban Ocon has picked himself up a five-place grid penalty, so not sure what he's done there. But we snuck by by half a tenth of a second over Oscar Piastri. I think if we get anything higher than tenth here, it's going to be a miracle. I mean, effectively now, though, we've got two opportunities in Q3 just to go balls to the wall here. 
and try and find any sort of pace we possibly can. So I'm just going to take big risk. And, you know, if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, then it's not the end of the world. Let's go for it. I'll tell you what, this first lap has felt very, very fun to do. But, again, not convinced we're going to be any higher than P10. No, or bottom and out. You've got to be so careful over that inside curbing. That final corner, though, much more fun than in previous F1 games. Up over the line, 5-3. Yeah, it's, it's P10 after the first one. We're only a tenth away from Ocon and Valtteri Bottas here. But, yeah, one more run then here in qualifying for the Austrian Grand Prix then. We've done pretty well to make it this far, especially obviously when we've got a sprint race tomorrow as well. Maybe points are going to be possible, but let's just absolutely try and throw this thing around. So fun. The Austrian GP circuit, as that might be the best I've taken turn one. Well, we dropped about a tenth through turn four, but we gathered it all back up again by being brave as we head down the hill. Avoid that inside curbing. One more corner to go then. Here from Austria, just like keep it between the white lines. Two and a half tenths up. Are we going to go higher than tenth? Despite that, no, we're not. Well, after all the drama and intrigue early on between Ferrari and Red Bull, somehow Hamilton has come out swinging there. Five cars covered by less than a tenth of a second here already for the Austrian Grand Prix sprint race. That is going to be one to watch then at the front of the field there. But we needed another four hundredths of a second to line up P8. But it is P10 though, ready for the Austrian Grand Prix. I'm feeling confident. Let's get into it. So it's all about speed in today's sprint. Not very many laps and no chance to get ahead on strategy. Who here today has the raw skill to take them to the top? the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Leclerc, Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Ocon, Bottas, Mr. Monaco, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Magnussen, Gasly, Albon, Joe, De Vries, Sargent, Fittipaldi, Sargent. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. I am adamant Logan Sargent is deliberately qualifying P20 every race just to make sure there's two Logan Sargents on the grid, according to Crofty. I was not expecting that. Changeable conditions in the sprint race here in Austria. Th this is going to potentially get rather scary uh, rather quickly then. I genuinely had not planned or prepared for that or anything in this GP. So maybe it's worth... Going on a set of soft compound tyres there. They won't last as well towards the end, but they will provide us with a lot more grip if that rain starts pouring. So things are about to get spicy. It looks like Piastri has had the same idea, which is good. That means we shouldn't get disqualified. But could we see pit stops in a sprint race? It looks like rain is inbound and we're expecting it in around five minutes. Five minutes until the rain. Well, there we go. Confirmation. It's going to rain here in the Austria sprint. However, we have learnt so far in this game dry tyres do do pretty well in slippery conditions. Much better than F122. We're trying to make sure we've got heat into the tyres. We've got to be very, very careful that we don't take too much out of the tyre life as well. Then 12 laps here on Sprint Race Saturday from the Austrian Grand Prix and there is really a sense of anything could happen. Purple score on the lineup. George Russell at the rear of the field. But look how quickly those clouds are rolling in. It is incredibly overcast here in the Styrian Mountains. Hopefully we can try and get a good start on the softer tyres. Five red lights. Well, one of the longest holds I think I'll ever see, but it is finally lights out and away we go there. And look at that, we have done well straight to the inside of absolutely everyone as we head up towards turn one there. Lando Norris trying to defend, and I think Bottas finding some room around the outside there. Plenty of contact off the turn one as Oscar Piastri has found a way through as well, but I think it was both Ferrari cars struggling to start there. Really did back everyone up behind them. 
So we head up the hill in towards the hairpin, just to be able to keep it clean and tidy there. It's Oscar Piastri. It's really been the big winner in all of that. We just about get past Bottas, I think, once the green flags have been re-enabled. So I think Fittipaldi has dropped right back to the rear of the field then. But yeah, look at that. Oscar Piastri, 11th to 8th off the start of the Grand Prix there. He's actually picked up a five-second five penalty. So we are now potentially into the points here in the Austrian sprint race. Of course, we've got to make sure that we hang close to Oscar. Um, yeah, that McLaren... We've often been able to hang on to him early on this season. So drama on the opening lap there. Perez has done a mega job to get ahead of both Ferrari cars there. And I mean Verstappen, yeah, it's taking the lead of the race from Hamilton. So it is Red Bull Mercedes. Red Bull at the front. Perez is in the lead of the Styrian GP there. Of sprint race at least. So yeah, it's all kicked off then. Off the start here. And we are right on the precipice of points. Lando Norris going three wide with the Ferrari cars up in towards turn two there. I'm trying to look for a move on Oscar Piastri's teammate just behind him. Don't say Lando Norris has gone around the outside of both Ferrari cars there. He's still neck and neck with Charles Leclerc. As Oscar Piastri trying to defend from myself though. we now got the Battle of the Spaniards going on as well as Charles Leclerc down the inside. Oh, contact between myself and Piastri. I was worried where he was trying to go there off of the corner, but no harm, no foul. We've all somehow survived. Just still Lando Norris trying to get around the outside of Charles Leclerc. Surely not. Down through the double left-hander. He's still... How is Lando Norris doing that in that McLaren car? They're mega ballsy, brave stuff by our fellow Brit there as he comes towards the end of lap two. And you know what? He's gone and done it. He's had both Ferrari cars in one go there. Mega run from Lando Norris as Verstappen applying pressure to Lewis. Still battling those. We head down towards Turn 1. Alonso now to the inside of Carlos Sainz. Oscar Piastri and I kind of just got to sit back and try and get a run off the corner. And that's exactly what I've done. Straight past Oscar Piastri then. You can see Charles Leclerc struggling. What is this? As we head up the hill, we've got cars absolutely everywhere. We're three wide. Backwards and forwards. Oscar Piastri tries to close in on myself. We won't let that happen. As we get towards the top of the hill there. And now trying to muscle our way around the outside of Charles Leclerc. What is going on? At the start of this sprint race then, Lando Norris now is going to try and send it back to the inside of Carlos Sainz. These have got to be the most dramatic laps you will ever see inside F123. And somehow now, we're up into sixth. I'm sure we're going to see Lando Norris again trying to apply pressure to Carlos Sainz as we head up the hill to the inside of his former McLaren teammate. And AC Sainz is going to try and compromise his running. You know what? We'll say thank you very much then. Straight up the inside of Lando Norris will go. We'll have the DRS on Sainz as well. And look at this. We're going to make a move for P4 then in the Austrian Grand Prix. So high up, we might get a nosebleed in this race. I mean, we've still got a long old way to go there. Red Bulls have checked out with Lewis Hamilton, who appears to have retaken the lead at the front of the field. But Austria on the F1 games, it delivers chaotic races in the past. That is no different on F1 23. I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself, but imagine if one of those front three had issues in this race. Could we be on? I know it's only a sprint, but a podium I would absolutely take. So here goes Carlos Sainz then up the inside at the top of the hill. Once again, we'll try and cover me off on the exit, but still these soft tyres providing us with ample grip as we make it to the highest point on the circuit once more. Splash a battery as well. Let's try and keep ourselves alongside the Spaniard. And as we go down the other side... Should be able to hang on once again there. Sainz, he can't do anything about us at the moment. We've just got him covered as the rain is now starting to arrive. Oh, Sainz, though, again, that Ferrari got a lot more grip than our car there. And looks like Alonso maybe still battling Lando Norris and has started to drop back slightly. So even if we can just try and hang with the Ferrari cars, that would be really, really nice in this race. We are still going to get the DRS run on Carlos as we head up the hill. Spaniard will go defensive. Very, very late. Oh, Sainz way too late on the brakes there. And Charles Leclerc, as we almost hit the anti store, will say thank you very much. Whoa! Haven't had that on F123. That had to deactivate the DRS just to try and hang on to it. And, yeah, maybe now Ferrari are going to try and run away again. That was properly scary. Yeah, those Ferrari cars have pretty much immediately checked out from me, though. So, I mean, if they're going to still battle... Not going to complain too much. Sainz and Charles side by side down at turn one. That's going to bring us a little bit closer once again. But I mean, even P6 here. More points on the board for the team. I am absolutely not going to complain. As there goes Charles Leclerc again to the left, to the right of Carlos Sainz up the hill. 
is he going to be able to make it work? Oscar Piastri still trying to battle behind me. And I mean, yeah, these two. I mean, we've seen quite a few battles between Charles and Carlos early on this season. Of course, still both in big championship battles as well in the bigger picture. And this time around, Charles Leclerc will make it through. Oh, that's interesting then from Mark, suggesting that it might be worth pitting with just three laps to go of this Grand Prix. We've got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. I think that might be a McLaren car running slowly behind us. No, it's Alonso. Alonso going slowly then down in towards the final couple of corners. So the Aston Martin seems to have expired here in this GP and Alonso out then of the Austrian GP sprint race. That's going to give him a lot of work to do come tomorrow. But yeah, we're just trying to hang on at the moment as this track is getting very, very slippery. Are any of the AI though going to pit as DRS now has been disabled? On to the final lap then of the Austrian Grand Prix. And I mean, at the moment, we are just trying to survive, it seems. To be honest, like maybe going on to the set of intermediates might have been a good way of going about things here. I think the soft compound tyres though have pretty much hit the cliff. We've dropped back right in towards Bottas's clutches, but rather not lose the place to the Flying Finn if I can avoid it on this final lap, but round in the final corner, I think it is going to be Perez that takes home the sprint race of victory. Yes, it is. Perez back on top once again then. Hamilton will stop Red Bull getting a 1-2 in the sprint race at their home GP there. I think Bottas made a little bit of a mistake behind me. Ferrari will come through for fourth and fifth there, but round in the final couple of corners, it's going to be points once again. It is only sprint race points, but they are points nonetheless. Out of the final corner, it's P6 here in Austria. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. Well, that wraps up the sprint. All that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, there we are then, the end of Sprint Race Saturday here from the Austrian GP. And like we said, Perez takes the win. Less than a second out of Hamilton and Verstappen waiting in the wings there. Both Ferraris beat out myself ahead of Ocon and Bottas. So yeah, Bottas there from... How did he get driver of the day? He went from 9th to 8th when Gasly behind him went from 16th to 9th there. But three extra points for us in the championship. We're still in P12 at the moment there, but we do build up that gap a little bit to the Alfa Romeo behind us. And yeah, not far away from Pierre Gasly as well. Maybe we could still get a top 10 come the end of the season there. That result, though, gives Perez a little bit of a boost ahead of Charles Leclerc. George Russell, uh, he, Sainz and Hamilton now just covered by three points as we head into the main event there as well. And still, of course, just building up that margin ahead of Alfa Romeo and Haas. They're still probably our big rivals during season one. But thank you all. Nope, not thank you all. We're going straight into the main event now, aren't we? You can tell... I do this quite often. Yeah, let, let's head into the proper GP then here from Austria. Before we jump into that, though, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, Head Out. We all want to go to Formula One Grand Prix in 2023, but ticket prices seem to always be increasing. Head Out offer the best prices available to every single Grand Prix on the 2023 calendar, and I've partnered up with them to try and spread awareness to you all. Click the link down in my description below and you'll be taken to their offers page, and if you use my unique code MAT30, you'll get an extra 30% off when you purchase. you also help support the channel in the process. Head out are a trusted seller and offer some of the best seats available for Formula 1 races, so a massive thank you to them, and let's get back into the video. This is it then, race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. Not long to go before our drivers hurtle off the line and into the first turn, the Nicky Lauda Curve. It was renamed in 2019 in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then, with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the 10 corners of this high-speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left-hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. It's Sergio Perez on pole today, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, 
the Clare, Mr. Monaco, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Norris, Russell, Albon, Joe, Magnussen, Gasly, De Vries, Fittipaldi, Sargent, Ocon, Sargent. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat is Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching out for as they head into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start, and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space, and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, well, here we are then. Ready for the Austrian Grand Prix then. And already we, we've got a warning over our strategy, so I don't quite know what that is all about. Uh, in terms of strat, though, here, as, as I've said many, many times before on F123, uh, soft uh, two stops seem to be the way to go. We, we It worked out really nicely for us at Canada last time out. So I think we're going to try it again here today. Ten laps on the softs at the start. Uh, and then we'll go 15 laps on the mediums and then about 10 or 11 on the softs towards the end. Unlike the sprint race as well, it looks like it's going to be dry conditions throughout here on Sunday. After a chaotic race, uh, today, yeah, is all about just trying to hang on as best as possible and see if we can try and pick up even more points for the team. Here we are, though, ready on the grid for the Austrian Grand Prix, waiting on those five red lights. Lights out and away we go there as once again trying to get a better start. And the Ferrari car on the medium. Charles Leclerc there as we head up towards turn one. Valtteri Bottas trying to look around the outside. And you know what? He's only gone and done it. Bottas around the outside of myself and both Ferraris then at the start of the race. Hamilton seems to have jumped, been jumped by Max Verstappen as well. Though, so not quite what he would have wanted in his Mercedes. As Carlos Sainz clearly immediately trying to get back past the Alfa Romeo. There plenty of contact as we get up towards the top of the hill between the pair of them. As we try and put the power down just behind. But look at the straight line speed. The Valtteri Bottas has got to be plunged down the hill in towards turn four. They're so still trying to hang on. A little bit of contact between the pair of them. But again, no harm, no foul there. As it looks like we could see the top three, just like they did in the sprint race yesterday. Already try and check out at the front of the field come the official race on Sunday. As well. Just a little bit wide there. Down through the double, right, uh, double left hander, even, I should say. As Bottas then, yeah, straight into P4 then. A lofty height. The Alfa Romeo, of course, both Alfa and ourselves, then really, yeah, should not be fighting up in these sorts of positions all too often, but we'll absolutely take it when we can then. Sergio Perez leads the way at the end of that one. Sykes then to the inside of Bottas. Leclerc to the inside of me. Back down at one, and you can see again Bottas and Carlos there making a bit of a hash of it. Sykes now looking for the outside as we head up the hill. I'm still trying to apply press to Charles Leclerc there. Let's all swoop out of the slipstream at the very last moment. Charlie Boy composed on the brakes. We're still just about switching though off the corner. So as one Ferrari gains a pace, the other's going to lose one. I mean, early on, I feel like I say it every single race, but yeah, early on here, we just want to try and hang on to the DRS of Valtteri Bottas in front of him, and I'm sure he's trying to do the same with Carlos Sainz there, Charles Leclerc as well. I mean, we could try and hang on for the Ferraris early on this afternoon, but it really is a question of what strategy. Of course, everyone else is going for in this GP as Charles Leclerc. Then up the inside, he'll go at the top of the hill. He does give you some room around the outside. That's something Verstappen didn't do for him all the way back in 2019. But we'll hang on. There we go, Lando Norris, despite McLaren. You know, they were running right up in the points for most of the sprint race yesterday and then walked away with absolutely nothing, reminiscent to the real-life Canadian Grand Prix at the weekend. But this time around, it was Oscar Piastri that picked up a five-second penalty rather than Lando. Uh, yeah, he's worked his way back up then into P8. So, yeah, I mean, really early on, we, it's probably about as much as anything trying not to let those cars that we've actually probably got a sensible battle on our hands with, not letting them get too close. As Bottas, though, has lost the DRS to Carlos. That's not too much of a surprise. Charles Leclerc, though, to the inside of myself, back down towards Turn 1. Really don't want to try and squabble with him too much over this. I think we'll let him try and apply some pressure to Valtteri in front. Charles Leclerc then applying pressure to the outside of Valtteri Bottas as we head back down towards Turn 1. I mean, 
maybe we can try and use this to our advantage. They're running very, very deep in towards that first corner. And now Bottas has got no DRS on the exit as well. So he's going to be left vulnerable to myself there as we head back up in towards turn three. Side by side with the Finn. He's actually going to try and have a look. Oh, so close. So close to Charles Leclerc's gearbox there. But we will squeeze away around the outside of Valtteri. Back up into sixth place we go then. Like I said, I think my goal early on, latch onto the back of Charles Leclerc and never let go. I tell you what, the changes they've made to Austria on this game is so much more fun than it was on F122. You know, it was the handling model as well, of course, but it really does feel like, in terms of the driving and the tracks, absolutely, this is the best F1 game we've ever had at the moment. I am just, it's so fun to drive on this game. Um, but anyway, soft compound tyres then seem to be just starting to fade out. We've got yellow flags, someone's got issues. Is that Bottas behind me going slowly, or is that a different car? No, it is Bottas! No! The flying fin out of the Austrian Grand Prix early on then. And that's going to mean well, we've got a bit of a bigger gap to Lando and Nico Hülkenberg behind us. But, yeah, I like Bottas. I wanted to see him score points. I tell you what, those top three still duking it out so, so much here that Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz are not too far behind. We are yeah, dropping back slightly still, but almost time for me to make our pit stop. Could we undercut into the lead? I completely forgot to pit. I can't believe... I, I used to do that so much on F122. Don't let it start becoming a common theme on F123. Matt, remember, pit at the end of this lap. Right, into the pits we'll go then at the end of lap 11. So we've been able to extend that first sin out just a little bit. Try to make sure we keep two wheels between the white lines on pit entry. We are going to be the first car of the day into the pit lane then. So, yeah, trying to work out where we might re-emerge in this Grand Prix. I think we're going to unfortunately come out probably in a little bit of traffic here, which is a bit frustrating, is trying to absolutely nail that. I wondered if you could get slightly lower time. No! Well, that's definitely going to leave us out towards the back of the pack then. That is so annoying. Why do I keep getting so many tire wear issues? in the pit stops but yeah we've come out we've come out ahead of Fittipaldi which I suppose is nice uh, but yeah now we've got to try and lose as little time as possible getting around a lot of these other cars there as you can already see Sergeant the Freeze side by side at the top of the hill unsurprisingly though hasn't taken us long to get to the back of the Freeze and Logan Sergeant is out of the final corner William's going to try and go defensive on me hopefully we can try and get round him on the run towards turn one much, much later on the brakes. Run myself a little bit okay, wide there. Make sure we work. give him room. There we go. That's one place picked up. And hopefully now Nick De Vries, no DRS to defend himself. He's going to be a bit of a sitting duck in the Alpha Tower as we head up the hill. We'll make it obvious what we're going for. Down the inside. Got so much more grip on the fresh tyres. Let's man off on next up on the old hit list. Oh, Perez out of the Austrian Grand Prix then. So that I think is our first high profile DNF of the season. And Sergio Perez then, Red Bull absolutely do not want this at their home Grand Prix. But the Mexican out, we're very, very lucky that hasn't brought out safety car, to be honest. Otherwise, that would have completely screwed us in this race. What is going to completely screw us, though, is the fact we can't go for anything as we head out the first couple of turns there. Green flags have now finally been unveiled once again. I mean, look at this. It's just like the sprint race yesterday. Three wide as we just run into the back of Fernando Alonso. There. Some, I mean, it's like they're on ATI. AI. Or something like that. I don't know why the AI are going so aggressive on their soft compound tyres there. But that's already three places made up on this lap. Make it four. Let me try and make it five. Time of contact with Kevin Magnussen there. To try and head down the hill. This is just wild at the moment. Alex Albon fighting on the cusp of points as well. As round the outside of Magnussen. We've just got so much extra grip at the moment. A little bit of wheel banging between myself and the feisty ding. But, of course, all these cars, remember, we have got to try and make sure, because effectively we could still be battling them towards the end of the day. There was Alex Albert into the pit lane as well as Zhou Guan Yu. So, yeah, we're doing pretty well then at the moment. Lance Stroll, next car in front of me, as that is Carlos Sainz then onto a set of hards to the end. So, yeah, strategy is all a little bit over the place at the moment, but I still stand by our two-stop. We haven't even lost that much time to Sainz, to be fair, either. As around the outside of Lance Stroll will go. As we head up the hill, that is going to be a fairly easy one. More cars into the pit lane then. Lando Norris, probably one of the big ones we're going to be racing with 
towards the end of the GP as Hamilton seems to have been jumped by the Ferrari Carlos Sainz as well then. So interesting to see that some of the AI actually able to do soft medium here as a strategy. Oscar Piastri has been able to do 16 laps on a set of soft, so we might have to change the strategy up a bit. If we can get the mediums to the end, that could be quite good. But, of course, we are going to be rapid on a set of softs towards the end of the day. Now we're really just getting the last couple of cars peeling into the pit lane then as Verstappen sets the pace on a 106. Hulkenberg in, Charles Leclerc in. So we're actually going to be quite close to Charlie Boy then as he re-emerges from the pit lane. But, of course, we've got another stop to do before the end of this race. Yeah, Ferrari... Haven't done too badly in terms of actual pace here, but yeah, it just seems like mediums, uh, yeah, medium hub is probably not the way to go. Everyone else's tyre wear has been better than we expected. I want Lando Norris has got the bit between his teeth at the moment. That gap coming down rather rapidly against the McLaren car behind us, and he was one that I was eyeing up, potentially being able to battle towards the end of the race. I always knew George Russell was probably going to be able to get back past me before the checkered flag. Um, but yeah, 16 laps to go. Not going to be long before we peel in for our second pit stop. Okay, but yeah, Lando Norris to just looks too fast. Three, three 24 then. Probably going to peel into the pit lane at the end of this lap. Trying to extend that soft stint Whoa, ever so slightly. My goal had been keep Lando Norris at bay until we pit. But to be honest, Lando's having one of those races again where he's basically a front runner in this series. You know, he's done it quite a few times now before so far as, well, he did get ahead of me momentarily, but we'll out-traction him on the exit and even claim a bit of free DRS in the process. But yeah, Lando Norris, we, we're basically including him uh, in the front runners today, so I think the goal by the end of this has got to be try and get back up to the Alpha Tauri there. I'm going to guess it's Sonoda, and he's having an absolute baller of a run as well. Running up in P8 at the moment. So the pits will come then at the end of lap 24, make sure Lando Norris knows where I'm going. McLaren almost doing something quite sketchy as well. They're almost into the side of me as we head then into the pit lane. Get the car slowed down. Wonderful. Always, always really scary, the pit lane here in Austria, for, for all the right reasons. But I'm hoping we come out around Zhou Guan Yu then in this race. As, yeah, it is Sonoda and Hulkenberg that are doing very, very well. Uh, please don't get held up on tyres this time. Okay, there we go. That was okay. The so there we go. We won't lose out any more time in that regard. And, well, I said I wanted to come out around Zhou Guan Yu. It looks like that's exactly what we're going to do. Zhou Guan Yu actually coming out behind me then in this GP. So six seconds, 11 laps to Yuki Tsunoda. We're in eh, not probably a quicker car, but a pretty similar car on much fresher and quicker tyres. Ten laps to go then. It's probably our best shot on the fastest lap. Only a 1.068 then, so unless we get very, very lucky with the DRS, I think, yeah, Max Verstappen is probably going to lock out that bonus point. Tolkenberg then and Joe Gwai uh, sorry Yuki Snowder even going side by side at the top of the hill. That's good for us. The gap is coming down at an even faster rate. Two seconds. It's down two already. Trying to make sure I get in the DRS range of these two, but it's not going to happen. But again, though, they're going to slow each other up down at turn one. A little bit of contact that time around. And Yuki Snowder having I mean, the absolute race of the season so far for him and Alpha Tauri. He's going to lose the place to Nico Hulkenberg and probably is about to lose another one as down the inside. We'll have a look. Make sure I claim the DRS. Wouldn't have mattered, though. I would have got it off Nico anyway. Nice there we go. Up into P8 once more, then, of this GP. And hopefully now, with the DRS on Nico Hulkenberg, it's about to become P7. Go defensive all you like, Nico. We'll absolutely try and have you around the outside in your Haskell. And there we go. Much softer, fresher tyres. We are through back into P7, then. To be honest, I don't think we would have kept up with Russell and Lando anyway in the second half of this race, even if somehow I've been able to stay out. So, honestly... If we can lock this down, I will walk away a very, very happy man. Around right, in the final corner then to start the last lap of the Austrian Grand Prix here from Spielberg. And it looks like Max Verstappen. It might not have been the ideal sprint race Saturday for our championship leader, but come Sunday, reliability issues for his teammate Hamilton struggling. A Dutchman looks to have gone and absolutely dominated this one for us, though. P6 yesterday was technically obviously our best result of the year, depending on whether you count sprint races or not. But so yeah, to walk away with our second P7, of course, following on from the Monaco GP, I really don't think we can complain about either there. Lando Norris, like I said, uh, has been absolutely rapid once again there. That McLaren car in his capable hands this year has really often proven to be a threat there. But Max Verstappen 
will win the Austrian Grand Prix there and once again further expand his lead at the top of the championship. Just brutally consistent okay, is the Dutchman when everyone around him seems to falter. Ferraris will come out to lock out the podium behind him. But Hamilton in P4 there. Russell uh, just sorry behind Lando Norris in P6. So it's going to be all four Brits in a row. But round in the final corner, we absolutely will not complain about P7. Get in there. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. A fantastic team effort then to secure victory here in the Styrian Alps. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? Ball put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. Let's move on to the constructors. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. Well, that was certainly an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, there we are then. Max Verstappen, winner of the Austrian Grand Prix. How many times have we said that before? And how many times will we say in the future there? Charles Leclerc, P2 ahead of Sainz. Hamilton, Norris, Russell and myself there. Hulkenberg, Sonoda and Alonso. I mean, yeah, Alonso, last a point. Very, very good job done by him there. And I mean, yeah, us on the two-stop... I don't think we could have done any better had we not to stop, to be honest. So I will absolutely take P7 at the end of the day. Any other big surprises? I guess obviously Perez are not making it through to the check of the flag there. Sergeant Fittipaldi and DeFries, the only drivers to end up one lap down. But that means championship-wise, we do now get the jump on at Pierre Gazzi. They're one point now back uh, behind Lance Stroll. So like I said, maybe P10 has got to be the aim come the end of the year there. Verstappen though now suddenly has got a 58-point lead at the top of the championship. The Dutchman just doing what he does there. Further down the order though, doesn't look like we've got any other major changes. Uh, Sonoda of course, his first points of the year so I'm sure he'll walk away a very happy man. Constructors wise though that means Williams now bottom of the pile the only team yet to get off the starting blocks they're doing worse than we have in the Williams road to glory. Uh, Red Bull though still lead the way and yeah we're just building up a nice little cushion ahead of Haas behind us there. Thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure you leave a like get yourself subscribed as well and we will be back very very soon when Formula 1 returns to my home Grand Prix we'll be back there tomorrow ready at Silverstone. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.